Welcome back to Velocity Invitational. Uh, Jonathan Green here, getting ready for more action on track. And as you can see, we've got a pro driver exhibition in hand, and that means I've got a couple of well-known professionals when it comes to these sorts of cars, Steve and Josie Rimmer, uh, who run Dirtfish. Uh, father founded it, and daughter doing the job of running it well. So, um, welcome. Um, before we start, I want to talk about what you've just been involved in, which is the Women in Motorsports Summit, Josie. Uh, really important, something I'm very interested in. You've got Michelle Abate, Pippa Mann, two girls I've known who've raced, IndyCar, Trans Am, you name it. Um, but you've had many more over the last couple of years. But this is kind of your baby, isn't it? Yes, this Women in Motorsport initiative at Dirtfish is, is a little bit of my baby. Um, you know, women have been doing this in the motorsport world forever. You know, women have been on the podium, women have been organizing teams, women have been managing teams, women have been on the crew, um, and we just don't hear their stories. So for Dirtfish Women in Motorsport, what we're really focused on is providing a platform for the women in the sport to speak and handing them the microphone so that they can be the ones to tell their stories. Um, you know, we're lucky enough that Velocity and Mobile One really believe in this, in this initiative, and they, yesterday and today, provided us with a platform on which to speak at Velocity. So today um, I was joined by Pippa Mann, Michelle Abadi, Sabra Cook, and the incredible Brittany Kinch, who is one of the folks who makes this whole event possible. Um, they just joined me at the Turn 11 Club to have a conversation about their stories and, you know, what, which aspects of motorsport really keep them tuned in. Um, these athletes are entirely committed to the sport. They're raising their own fundraising, they're, they're marketing for themselves, all of it. Um, so they're powerhouses, and I'm, I'm really lucky to have been joined by them here. Steve, what have we got out here? Uh, that looks like the Peugeot that you were talking about. I think I mentioned to you earlier that, um, that the, um, the, the, we, would, we, 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 did, we took the Peugeot out of the earlier um, uh, run, and we thought we're just going to run the Peugeot in this pro series um, and put a Frenchman in a French car. And Ro <laughs> Roman Jose uh, Grosjean was um, interested in driving it. And um, I'm enjoying watching him going around the track there. Um, uh, now, you were saying to me earlier, so we put it right. So this is Roman Grosjean, current uh, Junkos uh, IndyCar driver. And uh, getting his hand down, I see that, getting a little <laughs> bit of swirly going there. But he's also an ex, obviously, Renault Lotus and uh, Haas Formula One driver that was, of course, involved in that massive crash uh, at the end of his Formula One career. Uh, now an IndyCar driver, and uh, he did an amazing job of getting through that because it was a really nasty accident. Um, but now very much on the American scene. He's also on the world endurance scene, racing at Le Mans this year. But... Uh, he, he has done a hill climb. Yeah, he did a hill climb in the Delta S4, which was out of, not this, this specific one that we've had on the track this weekend, but in a Delta S4. But uh, putting him in the Peugeot seemed to be um, a great uh, alignment. That's and, of it, course, yeah. um, Roman is now based in Miami. So um, I, we're hoping to see him up in Dirtfish with the, the opposite direct diagonal part of the country. But um, there's this strange interaction. Roman... Um, Roman was the mentor to a friend of ours, Benjamin Pedersen, yes. who is, or was an IndyCar driver. Yeah. And uh, for the last decade, Roman has uh, mentored Benjamin. Benjamin um, uh, is not racing Indy this year, but um, our kids both went to school with Benjamin. That's and funny. so for, from the age of about 10, they've <laughs> known him. And Dirtfish threw a little bit of support behind Benjamin to help him get along the way. Um, you'll have seen the Dirtfish logo on Benjamin's Indy cars and Indy Lights yeah. cars. And I think that just proves the strength of what Rally can do. You know, um, Benjamin valued the the different um, aspects of motor racing and car control that actually can come with the Rally scene. And um, I think if you asked him, he would say it 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 served him well even in Indigar. Yeah, I, 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 and there's nobody. I don't think anybody would disagree that learning on dirt and learning how uh, how the what should we saw, say that the intricacies of the metal parts of the race car because you really understand them more uh, on dirt because you get a, a sort of a, a different kind of feedback than you would on asphalt uh, and I think there's a lot to be learned I, I think that speaks for two wheels as well as four wheels well, uh, a chance to learn the dirt and learn what you can do it makes you a much better racer driver. and what I didn't realize is in the 037 is Nolan Siegel who's an mm -hmm. Indy as well Indy yep. car driver 19 years old. Yeah, but what I didn't realize is um, 
quite a, a while ago, he came to Dirtfish mm -hmm. and got in a car. Did he? Yeah. Um, I won't say at what him. age because I'm not sure that we, <laughs> we would want our insurers to know what well, age. But, it doesn't matter. But, um, it's private uh, land. <laughs> and, and, you know, I, I guess our instructors saw a lot of talent there as well, which yeah. everybody else has seen there. But it, it's interesting that, um, you know, he was interested not only then in, in rally, but now he was very enthusiastic to get in uh, one of the Group B cars. So um, glad to have him there uh, and uh, support that as well. You know, uh, Josie, Steve, I, I've got to ask you, um, Josie, I can, un I, I, I'm being, you know, a woman in motorsport, I can understand not just your frustration, but your need to want to not only give back because you learn how to race yourself, but also uh, an opportunity, Steve. It's been missed. Well, I mean, the marketing alone of women's products in motorsport hmm. uh, it has been missed for years. It has, and as Josie said earlier, it's all aspects of this sport. There's a fabulous team here that puts on um, this event, which Brittany and others yeah. there, um, you know, uh, this women power um, powered is this event and uh, all respect to Jeff for putting it on and uh, everybody else who does it but there's a lot of women's support there but you know it's it's what we'd say you know you put a helmet on it doesn't matter who's under the helmet it's talent it's uh, you know it's enjoyment it's success and uh, it's one sport that is not a big differentiator from a physical perspective or anything else and um, and I think that's what we're trying to promote and diversity within the support the sport and certainly in rally, if you look at success in rally, you look back to the 1980s, we've been very um, lucky to have Michelle Mouton come to a yeah. couple of our women in motorsport events. And Michelle, you know, is, is very well known and respected, obviously, in rally and motorsport circles. And she's the, um, she, what is she, Josie, these days for World Rally? She's been the FIA safety delegate. Delegate, yeah, uh, yeah. I saw her in yes. New Zealand, yeah. Um, for, for several years now for the WRC. She's handing over that position uh, now in a well-deserved semi, very semi-retirement. Um, but as Steve mentioned, as Dad mentioned, <laughs> we've had, we've been really lucky to have her out to Dirtfish twice. You know, she joined us for our Women in Motorsport Summit in 2023. And she said to me at the end of the event, we were driving to the post-celebration post uh, cheers session, and she said, I had no idea that I have had this impact on people. Mm. And I, that's shocking to me. How could she not know what kind of impact I, she's most, had? I mean, you know, you're, you're in your own world. And, exactly. Uh, you know, I mean, and also, I think as a woman in that world, uh, Lynn St. James herself, you know, yeah. uh, Michelle Mouton, you're just working hard to make right. it, you know, to, to, to do the job and as you, well as you can. You've almost got to do it better. And you have to have the tunnel vision because there's no other. I mean, you know, you hear the stories of Michelle Mouton and, and Hanu Mikola at the finish line and, and they won't even talk to each other, right? Like she has to have this laser yeah. focus to even get to the same place as her competition. And then when surpassing them, it's a whole different ball game. Well, as you can see, we've got Indy cars, Formula One cars, you name it out there. Uh, I can't tell you who's driving it because uh, yesterday I think Tony, I uh, know who, I think Tony Ganarm was at the wheel. It's been like right now, who knows? <laughs> but there's, I can tell you who's here. Christian Lundgaard is here. Uh, Tony Ganarm is here. He's been in a Trans Am car. He got a third place in Jeffrey O'Neill's car yesterday. Uh, Nolan Siegel, who you mentioned, uh, the 19-year-old Aaron McLaren driver, uh, and also from California, by I, I may add, uh, is here. And uh, Scott Speed, obviously, we saw in action. Got a bit of news for you, and I know you know this, but uh, you may not know this part. Uh, you know, we talk about how the world is changing for women in motorsport, and I uh, was at Miami doing F1 Academy, the all-female single-seater series, which Leia Block has been part of. Um, but uh, Chloe Chambers just got announced this weekend that she is getting the full backing of Red Bull and Ford for her Academy uh, participation. And just across the way, or down the road in VIR, Kaylee Bryson is literally on the cusp of winning SGT wow. in Trans Am. So Incredible. Michelle Abate, I'm sure, will celebrate that with her uh, a little bit because that's been a great story. Absolutely. So we've got, you know, we've got some real, really good stories. And we'll be lucky enough to be joined by some of those same incredible women in the sport um, later, well, actually next year in 2025 at Dirtfish, we'll be hosting our fourth annual Women in Motorsport Summit. Uh, just outside of Seattle, Washington, you can expect some amazing women from various disciplines of motorsport, uh, Formula One, Rally, Off-Road, Trans Am, all of, all of uh, you know, the list goes on and on. 
So if you'd like to meet any of those women and visit Dirtfish and be a part of our Women in Motorsports Summit, you can be from anywhere, of any age, any gender. Join us at Dirtfish for the Women in Motorsports Summit in May 2025 to meet some absolutely awe-inspiring female well, drivers. Knowing you, you won't stay still. So what, <laughs> what do you want to do next? Where do you want to take this? I want to take it to the top. What do you mean? There you go. That's what, <laughs> she's no, a I chip mean, off the old block, <laughs> isn't she? Yeah. Um, yeah, there's a lot of strong women in my family at home, <laughs> and I, I learned very early that, um, that. I, I'm better off if I follow rather than lead in certain <laughs> things, um, and uh, I'm delighted with where we, we are, where we're going, and I 110% support, you know, whatever it takes to, to get this movement going, but also, you know, from a motorsport perspective, I want to get rally up there as well. Yeah. Um, uh, we, Jonathan, you and I talked off, off air a little bit ago. We, we, we're definitely trying to get a round of the World Rally Championship back into um, the U.S. It's not easy. Um, and, uh, you know, we need to pull together to do that. But um, I think also you look at World Rally today and it's a little bit different place than it's been in, in years gone by. So there's quite a lot of work to do. But when you look at coming and learning driving, just basic driving at Dirtfish, as I said to you before, the um, the actual skill sets that you, you you get when you sit behind the rally car, I think you you can use it in lots of different things in life and certainly in adverse conditions and driving conditions. No question. And like I said, you've seen the videos, you've talked to Steve and Josie. If you get a chance to go to Dirtfish, uh, take it. Uh, or take your partner, significant other, whichever, uh, as, a, as a present for a birthday or whatever, because it'll change their lives. It really will. They'll talk about it till, they're bo till you're bored of hearing about it, until you have to go <laughs> back again and do it all again and do it yourself, uh, because you'll, you'll never hear peace from it, because they, it's one of those things that really does... Uh, it's just different. It's, uh, it's not something you'd ever expect yourself doing if you're not a, a racing driver yourself, but you don't have to be, and that's the point. Um, you can go and learn just car skills, which is something we can all gain from. Now, you'll have noticed we've got NASCARs out there. Uh, we've got a Monte Carlo from 71. We've got a Grand Prix Pontiac from 91, Gary Bentley driving that. Uh, we've got a Galaxy, a Thunderbird, mostly late 80s, early 90s, although there is a 60... Five uh, Ken Epsman car that's out there, Ford Galaxy, uh, was sold by the Holman Moody, uh, in, uh, run by a Holden Moody factory um, in uh, '65. Uh, we've also seen some of the uh, Indy cars, uh, mostly McLarens, uh, and their history in the Indy 500, uh, including a Johnny Rutherford car that uh, won Indy three times. Uh, there's a few Formula One cars banging about. Some of them are on track, some of them are static, which is why I'm kind of hesitating to uh, absolutely name each and every car that comes by. Obviously, you can see that's a NASCAR. They haven't given us the numbers for each car, but that's Tony Kennard at the wheel of that one. And as he rightly put, he's the deputy head now, or head principal of Arrow McLaren. And I don't know if Tony's ever done any stock car racing. Uh, I know that Rafa Matos, a fellow Brazilian, is a two-time champion uh, and possibly three-time champion at the end of this season. Uh, so the Brazilians have got a, a stock car history. Uh, they do race uh, NASCAR-type cars back there. So uh, I'm sure Tony can enjoy himself. What next then? What are we doing? What do you, what do you, who have you asked? Have you got any surprises more? Well, it, uh, is that Pippa Man? That's Pippa Man. It is, it is. She just joined. Well, this is a thrill. There we go. Okay, this so is this is what I mean. I'm this glad is you why. don't notice the helmet, <laughs> which is, is pretty distinctive. We had to pull Pippa off of our panel just a few minutes early because she had to go run get in this car. I know that there were a few edits that needed to be made for it to be a safe car for her to, you know, fit in and drive in. Um, but she. Here she goes. She's, she told me that she's never driven anything like this. She didn't know if she'd make it out for this session, but it looks like she has. This is her first time being in a vehicle this type of this year. A vintage Indy car, yeah. A vintage. There she goes. A wave to everybody. Oh, this is so exciting. This is great. And I'll tell you what, you're absolutely right. Of course, she has been a multiple ent uh, entry into uh, the Indy 500 over the years. She's never really had the budget to, to do a full season. She does a lot of sports car racing. I've seen her in IGTs, uh, many a weekend helping professional drivers become better at what they do and sharing the car and setting up the car. 
Um, but I remember, you'll laugh at this, I remember her as an 18-year-old <laughs> in Formula Renault. And she was the only yes. female competitor. Uh, and remember me and my producer going, have you seen there's a woman in the race? And I mean, you know, we're talking back early 80s here, uh, or late 80s. And uh, there she was. And uh, she was just straight out of uh, school. And uh, she hadn't even come to the States by then, but she's made a huge career here over in the USA, a big proponent of women in motorsport and very much uh, on your uh, radar, of course, here this weekend. Absolutely. Her entire foundation called the Shift Up Now uh, organization, they're entirely focused on funding female racers. So not only is she here uh, driving an amazing vehicle, but she's got three of her female Shift Up Now athletes running around. And, um, you know, Shift Up Now is making a big difference, and Dirt Fish is... is partnering with them to get as many women back on back on the grid as we can. You know, it's interesting. I've spent many hours talking to Michelle Abate about just that. I mean, motor racing is about money and gaining sponsorship. Um, it, it was kind of a closed door, and it was almost based on snobbery, thinking that the, the women just wouldn't be as good, <laughs> and yet not realizing that there is a whole world out there. And, and, you know, Michelle, for example, has Ghost Energy as a sponsor. She's uh, now, uh, and I was about, what, what I was about to say is that the era is right now because social media allows each and every uh, competitor, male or female, to make themselves a celebrity in their own world. Uh, and that's what Michelle has done. She's worked really hard at social media and pushing those bounds. Uh, and that's got to be attracted to a sponsor to be able to say, hey, I've got this many followers on these platforms. And if you work with me, um, you'll get some exposure. Well, and the amazing part about Michelle, what I really respect about the way that she operates, Michelle Abadi has never once brought on a sponsor that she does not believe in believe in yep um, she says if she's going to be promoting that brand she wants to be completely honest in that she uses it she likes it that, it, that it's a quality product and yeah sometimes that makes the road to finding funding longer and tougher but Michelle is one of the most authentic people you'll ever see out on a racetrack and um, you know she is looking for funding for her 2025 season she's been climbing the ranks she's inherently talented and she's got more work ethic and drive than than most people on this planet. So Yeah, look her up. Uh, she's from uh, Las Vegas, Nevada, and uh, she's raced for a long time in Trans Am, first on the West Coast and now on the National Championship. And like you say, looking for funding. My thanks to Josie Rimmer and to Steve Rimmer uh, for coming in there. Best Thank of luck for the so rest much. of the day. Thank uh, you. Enjoy. Thank you for coming. And you will see when, when Dirtfish goes back on track at 410, you'll actually see another IndyCar driver in the 037. So. Who's that? I can't tell you. Oh, it's Christian. It. It's I Christian. Oh, Christian Lundia. <laughs> I like a good tease. But there you go. Thank you very much. We'll, we'll, and maybe throw somebody else in at 4 o'clock if you've got... Like you. Uh, no, not me in the car. <laughs> I mean, throw somebody else in the booth to we'll come do. and talk about it. We'll do. Thanks, Johnny. <laughs> Josie Rimmer there talking to us about Dirtfish. And, of course, the latest summit for women in motorsport going strong and getting better and better with every week with people like Josie at the wheel, so to speak. So the drifting is in full flow, I can see in the corner there. And more group racing coming up very soon. We'll take a short break, though, from Sonoma. Stay with us. It's Velocity Invitational, and you are invited.